things too well. Uh, uh, that iron, get me the tape of iron hide. Uh, the iron hide, you know what I'm saying? Who is the guy that wrecked my transmission? This, this is this is your iron eye. You sure it wasn't that one? No. <laughs> oh, come on, Prime. Let's kick some butt. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, that one. <laughs> yeah, Peter, it, it wasn't Truman Capote. I, I, I think that was in... Uh, G.I. Joe, or I don't know, uh, whatever it was. I don't know. Voltron. It may have been the professor in Voltron. <laughs> Little things like that that kept us alive. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, sir. When you were doing the opening of the Voltron voices, did you think you would become a cultural icon that you are seen by a lot of people as today? No, never. <laughs> Believe me. Uh, I had no clue. I had no clue. Uh, an actor, I think, follows his instincts and um, tries to do what he thinks is good and, and natural and honest to himself. And that's what I did. Uh, I tried to, to convey what I thought or interpret to be strength and um, obviously, uh, it affected my kindred uh, souls. You guys, I mean, we must be a lot alike. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Mr. Cohen. Yes. This is an immense honor to me because. Optimus Prime will always be the Autobot leader, no matter what happens. The question is, what was your feeling? What were your feelings when uh, you were recording the lines for Optimus's death? And if you could do, if you could possibly uh, say, uh, Megatron must be stopped, no matter the cost. <laughs> Um, yeah, when I when I read that um, when I read that part when I came to it, uh, I was kind of stunned. I said, oh, "Here goes the sand." <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like a soap opera, you know, when they get rid of somebody who's a troublemaker. Oh, kill that person! <laughs> that person gets pneumonia and is gone next week. <laughs> I read it and I looked at it and I said, why, why, I guess it's, it's come to an end. I guess it's all over with the movie. I just figured that's what it was. And, um, Megatron must be stopped. Was I dying then? <laughs> Wally, you gotta help me on that one. Am I dying now or am I kind of alive and kicking? Megatron must be stopped. Okay, take two. <laughs> okay, this is a good opportunity. That was a great question. Now, I want you to direct me to that line and how it should be read. <laughs> Megatron must be stopped, oh. no matter the cost. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot this part. <laughs> <laughs> you got the touch, buddy! Megatron must be stopped, no matter the cost. <laughs> Yeah.
Take two. Hello there. Good to see you again. Uh, I was also when you showed up in '97, and uh, it's fun to introduce you to uh, my Japanese friend outside the the after the panel. Do you remember it all? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it's like okay, who is this person? Uh, <laughs> now, um, a couple of things. First of all, we just had to wonder what that was going through your head when uh, that Frank Welker tape started playing at the opening ceremonies, and suddenly it's, he's threatening to destroy you along with everybody else at the convention. <laughs> That was fun. The <laughs> <laughs> was just looking at me like, oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> I thought he was there. <laughs> I really did. Yeah, Frank please. Walker is one of the greatest uh, greatest guys in the entire business, and uh, perhaps one of the, the most talented uh, actor in this business. But uh, I, I was really excited. In Rochester, New York, 1997, right? Yes. And, um, yeah, I thought he was there. I, I, I thought he had pulled a surprise on me, and I was so disappointed that it was a tape. Um, <laughs> all right, take two on that. Um, the other bit was uh, we had the, the distinctly odd pleasure of meeting Michael Bell a couple of years ago, and he told some interesting tales about breaking you up in the recording booth constantly. Uh -oh. Yes, <laughs> he, he could, you know, he he could do anything, and I'd laugh. He's just a funny guy. I mean, he's legitimately hysterical. Um, and, and, and a certain type of personality can get me, you know, to a point where I cannot relax my my uh, my stomach muscles. I, I I can't. I mean, I could be, try to be serious for about three minutes into a session with Michael Bell there, and um, all he has to do is look over and just go like that, and I'll do it. And now we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, terrible. Michael Bell, one of the best. He could crack you up at any given time. Yeah. Sir. Hi. Oh, bigger guy. Bigger guy? Oh, ladies first. Oh, yeah, ladies first. Oh, whack all, sorry. Hi. Hi, uh, Mr. Colin. Good afternoon. This is... Oh, uh, <laughs> just, to, just, to, just to talk to you, like this, with a microphone over a huge crowd of people, it's amazing. Um, I've been a fan... We're the only people doing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, I've, been a, I've been a fan since the age of nine, and, and I have to say that I just... You've always kind of been an inspiration to me as a little awkward girl being the only little girl who's still at the ages of 12, 13, 14, 15, still likes Transformers. And I was curious to know, uh, what part of yourself did you feel you brought to the character of Optimus? Uh, what part of yourself do you see most in Optimus Prime? Thank you. <laughs> well, um, thank you for the kind words. <laughs> I think um, you have to draw from something, and um, certainly Optimus was a leader, and he had uh, a tremendous power and a tremendous respect from his followers, and respect from his, uh, his enemies. And I, I've always been aware in my lifetime that leaders are never hysterical, they're always in control, and they're compassionate. They have a sense of humanity to them, and uh, a sensitivity that is covered with tremendous armor, uh, impenetrable armor, allows them to maintain that sensitivity. In my experiences uh, growing up, I had a lot of people that I could relate to um, in my life that were very, very similar to that. Uh, I had a brother um, who was quiet and strong. Uh, he's gone. And I had an older brother who was a uh, captain in the Marine Corps. And he was very similar, uh, along with a lot of his Marine Corps friends. They were very similar to that docile, yet commanding strength that I find uh, really intriguing about leadership. Um, and I thought practicing those 